Section 3.1, extrema on an interval. You have two types of extrema, absolute and relative. Absolute are the highest and lowest point on an interval. Highest and lowest point on an interval. It can include the endpoints it usually does. A relative extrema are the hills and valleys. For instance, if you have a graph like this, okay, these are hills. Those are relative maxes. These are valleys. They're relative mins. So relative min, relative maxes. Now, absolute extrema, you look for relative extrema as well as endpoints. The highest or lowest, counting the endpoints, are your maxes and min, absolute maxes and mins. Again, the key is you conclude the endpoints for absolutes. Relative extrema, you don't worry about the endpoints. You're caring about hills and valleys. The last word is critical numbers. Critical numbers are where the derivative is zero or where the derivative does not exist. Okay, And the C value are the values where it equals zero or where it does not exist. But those values, F of C, those values you get have to exist. Okay, So basically to find a critical number, you take the derivative, set it equal to zero, as well as where it doesn't exist, which is usually the bottom of a derivative. And what you do then is once you do that, you also have to make sure the point exists. Now, what's useful about critical numbers? Where it equals zero means, it equals zero means, aren't those where the hills are? Isn't the slope zero here and slope zero here? At a point like this, isn't the derivative not exist at a point, a jagged point? Where isn't that possible hills and valleys? What's important about a critical number is they're critical. Critical numbers, relative extrema, happen at critical numbers. Critical numbers give you relative extrema and some other things, but they basically give you relative extrema, which talk about the hills and valleys. And those hills and valleys can be absolute extrema, which are the highest and lowest points, also possibly endpoints.